Hey everyone, welcome to tutorial number 5, where I'll talk about how Super Collider deals with multi-channel sound. You might have noticed that most of the sound we've been producing so far is monophonic. In other words, just a single channel of sound being sent to one speaker. Multi-channel expansion is a convenient feature of Super Collider in which an array of UGENs is translated into multiple channels of audio. Since we're going to be talking about multi-channel audio, let's bring up the level meters for inputs and outputs, which we can create by evaluating s.meter, or using the default shortcut, which is Command-M. On the left half of the window, there are eight level meters corresponding to input signals, and on the right, eight level meters corresponding to output signals. You can independently change the number of inputs and outputs, but we don't need to deal with that right now, so I'll save it for another tutorial. The last thing I'll point out before we dig into multi-channel expansion is that there's a help document called Multi-Channel Expansion, which you can read if you want more information. The essence of multi-channel expansion is that whereas a single UGEN produces a single channel of audio, an array of UGENs will produce multiple channels of audio. When asked to play a multi-channel signal, SuperCollider will output the channels on buses with consecutive ascending indices. For example, we've seen this before. A function like this, with a single UGEN, will produce a monophonic output on bus 0, as we can see on the levels window. But, if we play an array of two UGENs, SuperCollider translates the array into a two-channel output signal. Because we don't specify otherwise, SuperCollider plays the first signal on output bus 0, and the second on output bus 1. To hear this effect more clearly, we can have these two oscillators run at different frequencies. We hear 300Hz in the left speaker, and 500Hz in the right. This example can be written even more efficiently, by using an internal array of arguments instead of an array of UGENs. In the following example, we use the array 300,500 as the frequency input, and SuperCollider expands this expression into an array of two sine OSCs in which the frequency values are consecutively distributed, which is essentially identical to the example above. If we perform mathematical operations involving two multi-channel UGENs, then the arguments for one UGEN will correspond with the arguments for the other UGEN. For example, I'll add a two-channel amplitude control signal and multiply it by the audio output. When we multiply these two signals together, the first channel of the amplitude control signal is multiplied by the first channel of the audio signal, and the same goes for the second channel of each signal. So as a result, the amplitude of the 300 Hz tone in the left speaker fluctuates 7 times per second, while the frequency of the 500 Hz tone in the right speaker fluctuates once per second. If we perform mathematical operations with two multi-channel signals that don't have the same number of channels, then the resulting signal will have as many channels as the larger array, and the shorter array will wrap back around to the beginning to account for the longer array. So for example, if we multiply a two-channel signal by a one-channel signal, then the one-channel signal will be applied to each of the two channels in the other signal. In this example, the 7 Hz amplitude pulsing is applied to both the 300 Hz and 500 Hz oscillators. Of course we could make these arrays larger, but if you've only got two speakers, there's not much point since the extra channels have nowhere to go. With this example, even though we can see that SuperCollider is producing five channels of audio, we only hear the first two. There is, however, a UGEN called Mix that takes a UGEN array of arbitrary size and mixes the discrete signals down to a single channel. In this case, I'm also going to scale the amplitude down to one-fourth to avoid clipping. Since we're listening to the output of a Mix UGEN, we're back to dealing with monophonic sound so you could consider applying multi-channel expansion to the mix signal, like this. Now's a good time to introduce the dupe method, which when applied to any object, returns an array of duplicates, like this. This means that the above example could be rewritten in the following way. The exclamation point is available as a syntactical shortcut for dupe, so the last line of the example can also be written like this. 
Splay is a UGen somewhat similar to Mix, but instead of mixing down to a single channel, Splay will spread an arbitrarily large array of channels across a stereo field, resulting in a more complex sound. You hear it most clearly if you use headphones. I want to take a brief detour from this example to illustrate an important nuance of UGen duplication. In the following example, I'm creating pink noise at half amplitude, and then duplicating this UGen. As a result, an exact copy of the instance of pink noise is created, and so we hear the exact same audio in both channels. And we can see this clearly on the output level meters as well. However, if duplication occurs on an argument within the UGen, then the argument is duplicated, but SuperCollider creates a unique instance of the UGen for each argument. Therefore, we can see and hear that the output of each channel is unique in this case. This nuance is less obvious in deterministic UGens like SineOSC, but it's important to bear in mind with noise generators like this. Let's return to the previous example, and I'll convert it into a synth def in order to illustrate another common pitfall. Remember that in a synth def, if you want to output a signal, you need to include an output UGen. So here, an important question arises. What do we supply for the bus argument of out.ar? If we specify bus 0, SuperCollider writes the first channel to this bus, and then correctly assumes that we want the remaining channels on consecutive ascending buses. So this is the correct approach. However, it's not uncommon to try something like this, and in fact it looks pretty reasonable. We've got a stereo signal, and so we want to write it to buses 0 and 1. When we create the synth, it doesn't necessarily sound wrong, but there's something unusual happening with the level meters. Here's what's actually happening here. By specifying an array of buses for out.ar, we are accidentally invoking multi-channel expansion on the output UGen which is already processing a multi-channel signal. So as a result, the stereo signal is written to bus 0, which causes it to appear on buses 0 and 1, but it is also being written to bus 1, causing the stereo signal to appear on buses 1 and 2 as well. This means there's signal overlap on bus 1, which is why that level indicator is higher than on bus 0 or 2. So this isn't right at all. The correct approach is to not invoke multi-channel expansion on output UGENs. Instead, just specify the lowest numbered bus for output UGENs, usually zero, and then let SuperCollider handle the consecutive distribution of audio channels. Let's take a look at duplication of randomly generated numbers. Like the previous example with pink noise, there's a similar but different nuance to keep in mind. In the following example, first a random number is chosen between 50 and 1200, and then that number is duplicated into an array of size 4. So every time we evaluate this line, we'll get an array of 4 copies of a randomly generated value. However, if we surround our rand with curly braces, we create a function, and functions respond to duplication slightly differently. The difference is that the contents of the function are evaluated each time it's duplicated, so here we will get an array of uniquely generated random numbers. It's a subtle difference in syntax, but an important one. Let's try adding some multi-channel randomness to our example. Instead of arrays of fixed values, I'll randomize the amplitudes and frequencies using the technique I just demonstrated. I'll use curly braces to delineate functions, and I'll duplicate them each eight times. If I take away the curly braces, SuperCollider will create arrays of eight identical numbers, so the complexity of the sound will be greatly reduced. In fact, in this case, each of the eight channels will be exactly the same, so the whole point of multi-channel expansion is lost. However, using the language operator xbrand, even with curly braces, isn't the best option for synth defs. Using lowercase xbrand in a synth def, as we've just done, chooses random values when the synth def is compiled, and these random values remain fixed in the synth def for every synth that's created from the synth def. So here, even though I'm creating several synths, you can hear that the randomly chosen values are the same each time. 
Therefore, you'll probably find it preferable to use the UGen X brand with capital E and capital R. While lowercase x brand picks values when the synthdef is compiled, uppercase x brand chooses random values when the synth is created. I'll create multiple synths just like I did a second ago, but here, listen to the unique frequencies and amplitudes of each generated synth. You can read more about random number generator UGENs by looking in Browse, UGENs, and Random. Just to make things sound extra nice, I'll add an envelope to the synthdef for a nice smooth 10 second attack and 10 second release. I'll use done action too so each synth will free itself when the envelope is complete. Now we can easily create a rich complex texture of sine waves. That's it for tutorial number 5. There are lots of other multi-channel UGENs which can be found in the list of UGENs under multi-channel. There are additional categories at the top of the list of multi-channel UGENs. Multi-channel expansion with arrays is very powerful, but it can also be difficult to conceptualize. So to conclude, I suggest that the best way to understand multi-channel expansion is to experiment with it, and make sure to use the level indicators so that you can see what's happening. In the next video, I'll talk about iteration in SuperCollider and how it can be used for iterative synthesis. Thanks for watching.